How's everybody doing today? It is February the 22nd, 2024. <clears throat> and if it looks kind of smoky uh, right now, which I can see it around here. I don't know if you can tell by the camera or not, but um, they've got a controlled burn going on right down the road from me and they're, uh, they're burning a, a field. And so there's a lot of smoke right now. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. So, uh, <clears throat> if it does look kind of foggy or whatever, that's just smoke from that burn. Um, and <clears throat> we are officially right now in the middle of what, here in the south, uh, we call yellow snow. Uh, it's the pine trees, uh, this time of year they start to uh, drop pollen and there's just yellow pollen everywhere. Everybody around here starts getting uh, sick around this time of year and uh, their allergies get really bad I mean it'll cover everything any of you guys who live you know around where I live at around South Carolina North Carolina down uh, I don't know how far up it goes with the pollen like this but um I mean it just covers your car completely in yellow pollen it gets all over everything you'll see it when the winds blowing it'll blow just clouds of yellow pollen everywhere and uh, It'll really, really get to you, make you have a really bad headache and all kinds of stuff. It's, just, it's horrible. I can't stand this time of year just for that reason. There's just pollen everywhere, and it, it clogs your nose up. It gets in your throat. <clears throat> it's just horrible. But anyway, so what I want to talk about today is uh, when do the cravings stop? And, uh... You know the, the 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 short answer to this is they don't uh, they just they don't uh, you know the problem with it is is we have encountered this substance whatever it may be and you know now we know how that feels and the problem with that is is that any time that you know something comes along something bad you know, the, the thing with cravings is, is that, and for some of you guys, it might be a little bit different. I'm, I'm just giving you my experience here, but I, you know, I talk to a lot of people too that, uh, you know, are alcoholics or addicts. And, I, you know, I've got a lot of friends that are as well. And we discuss this topic a lot. And, uh, like I said, the, the short answer is no. They just don't ever go away. Um, now, do they ease up a little bit? Yeah, they do. And they get, you know, the cravings come uh, in shorter intervals. I mean, they, they're, they're, they're spread out, um, and you don't get them as often, uh, especially like when you first quit drinking. I mean, it's all that you're thinking about all day long, but you know, once, once you start getting a little bit in, into your sobriety, uh, they, they, they get spread out, and usually when uh, you get a craving, it's usually when something happens, you know, somebody in your family gets sick or uh, something bad happens your car breaks down or something like that you know something that just we used to use alcohol to deal with our problems and that's really when especially for me when the cravings come um, and I you know, I've almost got two years in now and I've talked about this a bunch of times I still get cravings um, and especially you know the What's crazy about it is, as sick as alcohol has made me physically, uh, it's even it's just crazy for me to even have those kinds of thoughts. You know, to even be thinking about booze, but I still do. Um, now, have I ever acted on those uh, thoughts? No, I haven't. But in the past, I have. Uh, I, you know, I've, I quit drinking multiple times and uh, relapsed, went back. I just couldn't, I could not fight the cravings. Uh, they got so bad that uh, I just folded. And, you know, one of the things I've talked about too is that it was like, you know, one of those things. I just kind of just stopped by the store, uh, got my bottle of liquor, and just came home. It was like, it was like, um, like muscle memory. I didn't even realize what I had done. And the next thing you know, I'm in my kitchen, I've got my bottle, and you know, one of the first things I always did when I would get a new bottle of liquor is that little stopper on the top. Uh, that prevents you from pouring the liquor out really fast. I popped that right out of the bottle and just threw it in the trash. I didn't need that. You know, that just, it, it took too long to pour. So I'd pop that right out of the bottle and just start pouring my liquor right in my glass because, like I said, I would fill the glass all the way up. Um, but those were the times when, you know, like, you know, I, I'd gone a week or two without drinking and the next thing you know, something would happen. I'd get into an argument with somebody or 
something would go wrong. I'd have a leak in my roof or something. And I would just go, you know, I can't take it anymore. I'm, I'm folding now. And the funny thing about it is, is that, you know, you get these cravings and you feel like, man, if I just have that drink or if I take this pill or whatever it may be or you know, whatever it is, uh, that's going to make me feel better uh, about whatever situation that I'm in. And yeah, maybe it will make you uh, forget about your problems for that afternoon or that night or whatever it may be, but I'll guarantee you the next day you're not going to be happy with yourself and you're going to regret it. Um, I have a quote for today that I, that I thought really related to what I'm going to be talking about today. And um, the quote goes like this. It's, Most of the important things in the world have been accomplished by people who have kept on trying even when there seems to be no hope at all. <clears throat> and that's by Dale Carnegie. And that really pertains to today. You know, j continuing, continuing to push and, and do the things that we think that we can't do, uh, such as <clears throat> not drinking, um, pushing ourselves past that point when we, you know, when we get that, that craving and we, we're just about to fold. <clears throat> you know, pushing yourself through that and getting through on the other side. Um, you know, you, you're going to feel so much better about yourself in the long run, and you're just going to feel better in general because, you know, you didn't take the drug or drink or do whatever it may have been. Um, but like I said, you know, I still have cravings. Um, they're not as often as they used to be. It, when I first quit, it, that's all I thought about was alcohol. Um, it was on my mind all the time. Um, and, you know, my thing was is that I knew that if I drank again, that, that was probably going to be it. And, you know, I had a little bit different of a uh, scenario than a lot of people have. And some people ha are in the same shoes as me. And, you know, like I've said before, too, is that a lot of people that are told that, you know, that they're, if you continue to drink, if you're not going to continue to live and people will continue to keep drinking. Um, I know how powerful alcohol is. It can really get a hold of you. Um, and it, it, sometimes people are just in situations and they're just so down and out on their luck and just everything's going wrong with them and everything. And I understand. Uh, I, I completely do. Um, especially, you know, those of you that don't have support systems and stuff like that. I know how tough that's got to be for you. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, that's why I'm here is to talk about this stuff and to try to help and uh, talk about ways and things that we can do to try to, to deviate away from that and not fall in and, and give in to those cravings. Um, <clears throat> I've got some notes here and, um, you know, the, the thing is, is that we, we all have problems. I mean, the things, life just sometimes just sucks I mean it just does uh, there's so many things you know you might be like it, it, it's like one day you're having a great day and the next day it just goes over from you know from being a great day the day before to just being a horrible day the next day and you guys know exactly what I'm talking about if you've lived any amount of years and you've dealt with with struggle and you've dealt with pain and you've dealt with hard times that's part of being a human being um, life's not supposed to be easy. It's hard out here. Um, and especially in this day and age, you know, that it's just everything's so expensive and, you know, things cost so much money anymore. Uh, I was just, uh, watching this, uh, news, uh, thing the other day and they were talking about how, uh, the kids these days, um, can't afford to move out and get their own places and because the, the price of rent and, and the buy, and the, cost of homes these days is just ridiculous uh when they when i was watching that 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 newscast uh, and they were talking about that i was thinking about when i bought my first house i paid sixty two thousand dollars for the first home i bought and now homes are so expensive i i don't see how people are affording them because they cost so much money and that's got to be hard um, you know, there's a lot of people that want to get out of their parents' home, but they just can't afford it, and you know, and they're and they're depressed about that because they just want to be on their own. They don't want their parents telling them what to do anymore, and I completely get that. Um, you know, I I I didn't want to live with my parents anymore. I wanted to get out. I didn't want to be told what to do anymore, and that's got to be tough. And I know there's a lot of people out there uh, that are dealing with that right now, and those are those are hard times to deal with, especially if you can't afford just you know just to get out on your own. Um, you know, I, I, I totally get it, but at the end of the day, um, 
you know, drinking or using drugs isn't going to solve those problems by any means. Sorry, guys, I had to break off there for a second. Um, <clears throat> anyway, I was at, where I was talking about is the, the alcohol and drugs are just not your friends. Um, you know, they play a mind game with us and they make us think that it's really going to help solve our problems. But at the end of the day, all it really does is to just kind of wraps bubble wrap around your problems and just makes them a little bit easier to deal with. But it doesn't remove the problem. Uh, and, and all it does is it, it, the problem's going to still be there. Uh, all you've done is just removed yourself from that for a, a brief period of time. But that problem's still going to stay there. It's not going to go anywhere. And at the end of the day, uh, now you feel like crap, you feel like garbage, you're hungover, or whatever it may be. And you have that guilt of, I relapsed, I went back to it. And you have to deal with that again. And that problem is still there. It doesn't leave. It's still the problem. It's still there. It's not going to go anywhere. Um, at the end of the day, uh, I, I wish I had never even touched booze. I wish I had never touched any alcohol or drugs. Um, and, and, and I know you guys know what I'm talking about here because unfortunately once you've tried it, you know how good it can make you feel. And... Um, you know, there's no turning back from that point. It's like going to Disney World or something, you know. You go to Disney World, the place is awesome. Uh, but if you had never been there before, you wouldn't know what you're missing out on. Um, and I'm just using that as an example. I mean, it could be anything in life. You know, it could be like uh, flying a hang glider. Uh, if you've never f flown a hang glider before, you have no idea how much fun it could be. But if you go out there and you actually experience flying a hang glider, it's probably pretty awesome. I wouldn't do it personally because I'm scared of heights. But um, And you wouldn't think that with some of the stupid stuff I used to do back in the day, like going off 50-foot waterfalls. I used to be totally scared of that stuff. And like I've said too, um, I used alcohol as a lubricant to help me through those really stressful times. Some of that stuff I never would have ever have done if I hadn't have been intoxicated or slightly intoxicated or buzzed or whatever it may be. I needed that, that lubrication to help me, that liquid courage to help me through those times. Um, the guilt, fear, anxiety, the self-loathing, it's just not worth it in the end. Um, all those things come along with it. Uh, it it's just not worth it. Um, so, you know, what can we do about our cravings? And I've talked to a lot of people about these types of things. Um, if you start thinking about it, do something productive. Uh, you know, find something that you have just been putting off for the longest time. And, and guys, I can tell you this right now, and I, I, I can promise you this, that if you take the time and find something, when you start to get a really bad craving, um, and this is not just coming from me. This is coming from so many people that I've talked to. Uh, and it works for, for everybody that I've spoken with. If you find something to get your mind busy, when you start thinking about those crates, you start thinking about the alcohol or the drugs or whatever it is. And if you start finding things to do, um, I would suggest having a list of things that need to get done around your house or your car or anything that you've been procrastinating on getting done. I know there's things like your door and your bathroom just doesn't close all the way. And, uh, you know, take all those things. Go around your house, write a list down. And when you get a craving, grab that list and start doing things. Start knocking those things out that you've been waiting to get done, that you've been procrastinating on. I know it's not the funnest thing in the world to do sometimes. You gotta go in there and do it. But man, I'll tell you what, you're gonna feel so much better after you went and fixed that bathroom door that hasn't closed correctly or that closet door that's been hanging or you go in there and you organize your pantry or your spice rack. You get that all straightened up that's been a mess for the past three years. Or you organize your clothes in your closet and get rid of all the stuff that you haven't worn in 10 years or whatever it may be. Find the stuff that needs to get done. Get in there. If you're anything like me, uh, I can tell you right now, um, I, I, I've been diagnosed with ADHD or ADD and uh, that when I was younger and I, I know that I, I, I tend to do these types of things. It happens to me all the time. I'll start a project and then next thing you know while I'm getting this one project done then I'll see this over here needs to get fixed and then this needs to get fixed. So then what I start doing is I'll make a mess over here 
and then I'll make a mess over there, and then I'll make a mess over here, and the next thing you know, I've got 10 projects that I'm trying to juggle all at once, and I've created this huge mess. Next thing you know, it's like six hours later, I'm finally wrapping it all up because I've just torn all this stuff apart, and by the time I know it, six hours has passed, and it's time, you know, it's almost time to go to bed. And then, by, you know, at that point, I, I go lay down, go to sleep. I'm tired because I've been working. I've been doing a bunch of stuff. And I wake up the next day, and I'm like, man, I'm glad I didn't go it cave into those cravings. And that just, you know, I did something else. And I feel good about myself because I got some stuff done that's been meaning to get done for quite some time. Um, this is one thing that I've heard from a lot of people, and I've tried this myself, and this works. If you start getting those cravings, especially if this works for, for drinkers, um, but if you start getting that craving, get yourself a bottle of water and chug it. Just chug a bottle of water as fast as you can. Get that bottle of water down. It's water. It's not going to hurt you. Now, if you go drinking too much water, yes, uh, too, drinking too much water can actually uh, harm you pretty bad. I wouldn't go chugging a gallon of water, but get yourself a 16-ounce, 12-ounce bottle of water or whatever, or, you know, have a, uh, I have a keep one of these containers with me. I have filtered water in it all the time. If I start getting a, a, a craving, I'll chug water. And the funny thing about it is, is that you're getting that, like, kind of fix, like you're drinking something. But also what ends up happening is you end up filling your stomach up with liquid. And it's, it, it kind of replaces the booze. You're not thinking about alcohol at that point after that. you got this full belly of water. The last thing you want to do is drink booze on top of that. It really does help. Another thing that I found that helps, too, is eat something. I went so many years without eating I mean I did eat of course I did but not very much and you would think with me being a chef that I was like eating all this great food all the time I really didn't now I had to taste things all day long I mean it's just part of my job especially when one of my guys was making a new sauce or you know I came up with the recipe and I wanted them to make it I wanted to make sure that they were you know the the, the recipe was spot on and I would tell them you know more salt more pepper or whatever it may be but I didn't eat a lot of food um, and the reason being is because if I had a full stomach, I couldn't get a buzz like I wanted to. I always wanted to have an empty stomach. There, I, that feeling, and, and for you, those of you that are drinkers, you know what I'm talking about. That feeling of the alcohol going into an empty stomach, that burn, that, that like warm feeling that you get immediately. And I'm not trying to say this to like make anybody have any cravings or anything, but you know what I'm talking about there. If you slam a bunch of food down, eat a nice big meal, something really healthy too, and you get a full belly, that's it. You're not thinking about alcohol anymore. And, and if you are, there's no way you could even drink anyway. And it's not going to do you any good because now you have a full stomach. And you all know that are drinkers that once you have a full belly of food, there's no point in drinking anymore at that point. I mean, it's over. Now, normal people that drink, yeah, they can eat a meal and they might have a glass of wine or two glasses of wine or whatever but they drink it really slow through their meal and you know I've done wine dinners back in the day and it would blow me away I never understood this I would do wine dinners for a table of eight or six or whatever it would be and I would do private wine dinners uh, that I would cook myself and <clears throat> we would do these things called chef's tables and basically it was a chance for them to have a meal prepared by the executive chef and a lot of times we would set up a table in the kitchen and they would get to sit back there and watch everything while it's going on watch me cook everything or sometimes I would take it out front and set everything up out there but the thing that blew me away whenever I would do that is uh, each course that I would do and I sent you know five six seven courses of food each course would have a wine that we would pair with it and it I never understood why people could I would you know we would pour the wine all around the table and I'd put the course down and people would just take a couple sips and put the wine down and then they'd leave that much in the glass I mean it's not like we poured a whole lot in there to begin with but they barely even drank any of it and there'd be this glass of wine that's just sitting on the table they wouldn't even finish and they'd take it and pour it out and go on to the next course I never understood that but that's because I'm an alcoholic if that was each one of those courses I would I would have chugged each one of those glasses of wine and went on to the next course. There's no way I would have left booze just laying around. Um, another thing to do as well is wear yourself out. You know, go for a walk, a bike ride, anything like that. Anything that's a physical activity. Do push-ups. I was just watching um, 
uh, an interview just yesterday. Uh, this guy was inter I can't remember who it was that was interview. It was interviewing another guy that was um, uh, an alcoholic, and uh, he was saying, you know, at the beginning of my uh, quitting drinking, anytime I would get a craving, I would just drop to the floor and do push-ups. And wherever I was, he said it didn't matter if I was in Walmart or Target or wherever. He said if I had a craving, I dropped to the ground and did 25 push-ups right away. And that got rid of the cravings. He said, and I did it all the time, especially in the beginning. He said he was doing hundreds of push-ups every single day. But the good thing about doing exercise when you get a craving is, is that you're you're getting your endorphins in your body going, which are like your natural uh, painkiller in your body. Um, and also, you know, it's going to heighten your mood. Um, you get those endorphins pumping. It's going to make you feel better. It's going to wear you out. Uh, and, and it's, it, like I said, it's just gonna make it's gonna brighten you up a little bit, and it's gonna make you tired. And one of the one of the biggest things that comes along with this, and in that I'm gonna make a video about this as well this week, um, talking about sleep. But because sleep is so important during this process, uh, but uh, getting yourself worn out so that whenever you are tired at night, that you will actually go to sleep and sleep a whole night. Um, there's nothing worse than, you know, laying in the bed all day long because you're dealing with cravings. You, you feel like you can't do anything. You kind of isolate yourself. I've done it so many times. You isolate yourself in your room. You just lay there and watch TV all day long or read a book or whatever it is. And that's all that's on your mind. But if you get up, you do a bunch of exercise, you go for a couple mile walk or a mile walk or a kilometer, whatever it may be, whatever you can handle, but push yourself just a little bit to where it really wears you out. You're going to get a good night's sleep and you're going to wake up and you're going to feel a heck of a lot better because you actually did some exercise, you did something positive with yourself, and you didn't use the alcohol. Because <clears throat> I could tell you this one thing, and this is another thing I can promise you. I've never talked to anybody that skipped on drinking the night before or that day. You know, they made it through the whole day and they skipped. I've never talked to anybody that woke up the next morning and went, man, I should have drank last night. I feel so stupid for not drinking last night. No, everybody that does it, they feel good. They feel proud of themselves that they pushed through it and they didn't cave into that desire. They didn't cave into that little person on their shoulder that's whispering in their ear and telling them, have that drink. You know you want it. And you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. That little thing on your shoulder that's sitting there, it's always whispering. Just one. You know you can handle it. Just one. You deserve it. Just that one drink. You've made it this far. You can control it now. But it never works out that way. Um, <clears throat> make yourself a nice non-alcoholic beverage. If you're if you're struggling really bad, I'm going to tell you one thing. Those, um, uh, those uh, sparkling waters, like the, um, uh, the carbonated water beverages, the ones like the LaCroix or stuff like that, you get one of those and get it really cold and drink it, man, it is almost like drinking a cold beer. And you get that nice little, like, fizz on the back of your throat all that stuff have one of those drink that it's okay and maybe take one of those and pour it in a cup with some ice a little splash of cranberry juice or something like that and a little lime or anything i mean have one of those as a drink treat yourself a little bit you know and that'll take away that craving a little bit um <clears throat> i talked about that uh and another thing too is, is the, like I was saying about finding things to do, I bet you all the money in the world that if you start like getting yourself involved in things around your house or like I said, doing something on your car that you've been meaning to get done, I'll guarantee you you're going to find a heck of a lot more stuff that you need to get done if you start that. And keep yourself a little pad of paper. You know, have this around. Take notes. Get yourself one of those little teeny uh, little notepads and carry it with you all the time and make little notes in there I'm telling you having a pen and a, and a paper a pad of paper on you is is so much better than just using your phone or whatever because you, you can whip that thing out and take notes if you're having a craving take a note and and start keeping a little bit of a journal what made you have that craving what came up that made you think about alcohol or drugs maybe next time you can avoid that um, <clears throat> and and that's and that's pretty much it guys um as far as uh you know some tips on things to do as far as what to do when you're having a craving um but 
like I said, uh, the cravings, they never fully go away, at least not for me. And for most of the people that I've talked to, uh, I have talked to some people that tell me they don't have any cravings at all. And that's great. Um, I'm not saying that everybody's going to be the exact same. But for a lot of us, I think the cravings just never do totally go away. But they do come up sometimes. And most of the time when they come up is whenever whatever we were using the alcohol or the drugs for that we wanted to um, to help cushion and, and, and ease us into those things and those problems that we have, a lot of times that's when the cravings will arise. Um, but don't give in to them because it's just, it's, it's not worth it. It really isn't. And um, you're just going to not feel good about it the next day. I promise you, if you just push through, make it through that night, you're going to wake up the next morning and you're going to feel so much better that you didn't fall into those cravings and give in. And you're going to feel so much better about yourself because you, you're strong and you made it. For all you guys out there right now, and there's a bunch of you watching who have just quit recently. And have, you know, and for the guys that, have, that are on here that have got a couple years, months underneath their belt, man, congratulations to all you guys. You guys are doing such a great job. I am so proud of all of you. Every single day in the comments... I see so many people in there. I'm four months sober. I'm a year sober. I'm three weeks sober. Whatever you're at. Be proud of yourself. You are doing the impossible right now. And you really need to pat yourself on the back. Keep up the good fight. You are worth it. I promise you that. You are so worth it. Don't give in to the cravings. Keep pushing forward. And keep your eye on the prize. And the prize is sobriety. And being sober, it's, it's, it's a totally different life. And man, does it feel so much better to wake up every day and know exactly what you did the night before. But anyway, guys, this video's gone on long enough. I'm going to go ahead and hop off of here. Um, real quick before I jump off of here, my wife has got everything set up on the Amazon page. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to add the link in today uh, for that Amazon page. The only thing that we have available on there as of right this second is just the hats. Um, and that's it. And the only thing I have is just the one style hat as of right this second. I will get more stuff up on there. It's just this, like I said, this has been a huge learning curve for us. My wife finally got the hat on there. Um, and that's all I have listed as of right now. And we have it listed as there's 25 right now. Um, we don't have those ordered as of yet. But when those, when, those, when those orders for the hats come in, I will go ahead and get those. They made my hat for me. I went in there and spoke with them. I told them I wanted the hat done. I showed them everything I wanted done. They had it done the next day. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put it up. It's on Amazon. Everything's on there. Uh, the price of the hat is a little bit pricey. We're having to pay Amazon uh, a certain percentage. I, I'm gonna tell you guys honestly. I promise you, I'm making five bucks off of each item that I'm selling. That is all I'm making is five dollars off e each item. Um, I, I know they're a little bit high on the price, but that's because, like I said, uh, we have to first we have to pay for the for the product. We have to pay Amazon a percentage. Um, it, it's just part of the deal, and I'm not doing this like buying big bulks of this stuff so I can get a discounted price. I'm doing this basically. You know, as each order comes in, I'm going to have it made and then I'm going to have it shipped off and all that stuff. So I apologize about the price. At some point, maybe I'll get it down a little bit uh, once we can, you know, kind of work through some things. But, you know, this is going to be a lot of work for me. It's a lot of work for my wife. And we do want to at least make a couple dollars off each one of the sales that we do. Um, you know, we're, we're, we are doing this, you know, just to make a couple bucks at least. I mean, there's still going to be a bunch of packing that we're going to have to do, printing off shipping labels, driving back and forth to the post office, picking up the products, all that stuff. So at least one, at the end of the day, I'm probably just going to break even after everything's said and done. Um, we had to buy boxes and all that kind of stuff. But I just want, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm completely honest with you guys. If any of you guys want to see, I'll show you the numbers exactly where we're at and what we're, what we're spending. I'm an open book, guys. I'm completely honest. I'm not going to lie to you about anything. I'm not making a whole lot of money off this. We're not trying to make big profits. It's just we, we really just want to make like a dollar or two off each sale and, you know, at least be able to do something with the money. But at the end of the day, we're not, we're not getting rich off this. I, I, we really aren't. So 
once again, I'm, I'm sorry. I wish I could do the price a little bit cheaper, but I mean, that's just where we are. So anyway, guys, I'm going to go ahead and hop off of here. I'll put the link to the Amazon uh, store on there. The rest of the products will get added on there later on, um, but we're just going to go ahead and start off with the hats for now. Um, I've got to get some pictures of the shirts and stuff like that taken and uploaded. And I need to speak with them again and, and so I can make sure I've got all the colors that, because like I said, you can pick your different colors and all that stuff as well. So once I get all that stuff situated, uh, we'll get the shirts up and all that good stuff. Um, that, that, that'll that happen in the next couple of days. But as of right now, um, we do have the hat on there. We'll probably have the mugs up there uh, in the next day or two as well because um, we can get those done pretty quick as well. Um, but the mugs and the hats are probably going to be it for the next couple of days until I can get all the colors of the shirt sizes all that kind of stuff situated because we have to have pictures and everything uploaded on the site um, and uh, I, I got I, it's just it's a process so anyway I'm gonna get out of here guys I love y'all so much thank you so much for watching today's video and um, until tomorrow I'll see you then and if you're watching you haven't subscribed yet and uh, you're new to this channel please subscribe I'd really appreciate it it helps spread awareness and get this stuff out there for more and more people it helps the algorithm um, right now we're at over 3,500 subscribers and uh, it, you know like I said if you're not subscribed please do I make videos every single day talking about these kinds of subjects and I really would appreciate it so with that said guys I'll see you in tomorrow's video. Bye -bye.